So when you see somebody winning and you remind them of where they failed, that's a you problem. Has nothing to do with them. They're winning. You just don't like it because whatever happened to them would have crippled your sorry ass. So a lot of you guys need to just toughen up. This is where we fight. This is where they die. Too many motherfuckers out there judging people when they got no business. The problem is they're always going to be there, right? And that's a great way to open up this entire podcast. But really, I want you to think about it. You're going to get judged on either side of the, the equation. You're going to have shit talk when you're winning. You're going to have shit talk when you're losing. And you're going to have the shit talk all the way in between. It doesn't matter what you're doing. There are going to be people out there that are going to shit all over you because you are somewhere where they aren't. And they either want you to stay there or they want you to come back down to the bottom. Those are the only two options because they hate how you make them feel or they love how they feel because you're doing worse than they are. So you got a choice. You can sit there and, and abide by their rules and play their little games and just get crippled by them, or you can cripple the fuck out of them by toughening up your skin and stacking some armor over your body and callousing yourself to take every hit they give you. Like a lot of people, they just have such a low tolerance for pain. They have a low tolerance for the wrong thing. And again, both sides of the equation. If someone's shit talking, you so what? They're words, sticks and stones, motherfucker. I'm going to keep on going and doing everything that I want to do. Why? Because it's my life, not your life. You guys need to start looking at your perception of what somebody says to you and take that in stride and just keep on going. What difference does it make if someone shits all over you? It doesn't matter. The only time it matters is when you listen to what they say and change your direction and if you are that person that's hating on somebody and you get them to, to stop what they're doing and quit on their goals, fuck, you're embarrassing. You're embarrassing to yourself. You're a piece of shit because you stopped somebody because of your insecurity, not because of them, because you don't like it, because you don't like how you feel because of what they're doing and it exposes your weakness, your envy, your jealousy, your insecurity. God, you were here. I'd beat you around the head. That, sh that shit just makes me so mad. But a lot of you guys, you, you have no tolerance and, and you're going to take it however you take it. I really don't care. You probably shit talk me in the comments. I don't care. I have obnoxiously thick skin. You know how that happens, by the way? You get thick skin by owning your shit. You become the strongest man in the room by going, I already know my inadequacies. I've already addressed them. And anytime I fuck up, I own it. And I keep going. I don't live there. Some of you guys just hang on to the inadequacies of other people because you don't like how you feel. You remind people all the time, constantly reminding people, oh, remember when you did this? Remember when you did that? I'm sure they do, but what the fuck difference does it make with right now? Well, there's accountability. Yeah, with yourself, you don't have any. See, success feels like an attack to people hiding behind their excuses. The truth feels like an attack to people hiding behind their excuses. That's it. So when you see somebody winning and you remind them of where they failed, that's a you problem. Has nothing to do with them. They're winning. You just don't like it because whatever happened to them would have crippled your sorry ass. So a lot of you guys need to just toughen up. Like, you, you got no tolerance. You got no tolerance for discomfort. No tolerance for sadness or being upset or pain or pressure or anything. Shit that's heavy. You just got no tolerance for that stuff because you, you don't have the mental training or capacity because that's what's required. A lot of people are just crippled. They're incapacitated. It's even beyond crippled by normal daily shit. Listen, school round or schoolyard bullies and people trash talking you have no effect on you until you let them. Nothing can make you feel anything without your permission. So why are you giving a fuck about the opinions of anybody? I give a fuck about my opinion only. Oh, I care about everybody else, but I care about my opinion about myself more than everybody else combined. I think it's ridiculous to even think for a second that somebody else's opinion about my life, my one life, my life that God gave me, that you have any say on. I'm not a child, I'm 51. That's the other flip side of this equation. Somebody's going to be just like, see, well, that's what we should do. We should let children decide to choose their gender. Get the fuck out of here. They don't have the emotional maturity. But some of you motherfuckers don't have the emotional maturity to even conduct yourself like a normal human being, and you're an adult. 
It's embarrassing. For those of you guys listening, I just drink Coke, by the way, in case you're wondering what that sound was. A lot of you guys are crippled by normal shit that happens in your life because you've never been taught the mental resiliency, the mental resiliency to actually keep going. Like everything's given this label. The problem with the label is that way it takes you out of the equation and puts the onus on something else. The label is the problem. The disease is the problem. Just to be, just to be clear, this is great. Oh, fuck, this is great. Obesity, heart disease, lung disease, for the most part, type 2 diabetes, for the most part, not diseases, they're decisions. Oh, I'm sure I'll get all kinds of static from that, but it's going to be from fat people and people that are sitting there going, what are you talking about? Lung disease and heart disease is a disease as they puff away on a cigarette. No, it's not. You ask any cardiologist what they would tell you to do, the number one thing they would do to, to prevent any adverse issues with heart and lungs, they'd say, don't fucking smoke. It's a preventable cause of death. How stupid do you have to be to go, well, they said it's going to kill me. Big, bold print on the package. Hey, cigarettes will kill you. You numbnuts are still grabbing boxes of cigarettes, just smoking away. Won't happen to me. I'm the healthiest guy on the planet. And I wound up with cancer. Don't say it won't happen to you. The lesson's coming, whatever that may be. The level of the lesson, you got no idea. But you got to be able to take it. If you can't take that hit, you're going down. Like, when you have a label, the label becomes the responsibility for you. You're an adult. There is nothing on this planet that is somebody else's responsibility. Ultimately, it's yours. Whether they caused it or not is irrelevant. It is your problem to solve. I know people that take a fucking Advil before they go to the gym because they don't want to hurt when they go work out or they take an Advil after leg day because they're like, oh, my legs are really sore, except the, the problem becomes they don't want to deal with the consequences of training, which you have to endure a small amount of time of, of discomfort, but then they're forced to endure the consequences of their stupid behavior and dumb decisions because they have renal problems or, or gut problems. And now it's somebody else's problem. It's got to be the pharmaceutical company that did it to you. Listen, I got no love for the pharmaceutical company, but it's not their fault that you're taking an ad bill. See, the problem is when you're forced to see the outcome that you created, the pain, whether it's emotional or physical, it doesn't matter. Whatever it is, the first thing you do is you go, how do I escape? Because that's what you're taught. You're taught to escape. Everything's an escape. You're desperate for anything that's going to just turn off everything around you and the world gladly goes, here you go. Here's a pill. Here's a potion. Here's a lotion. Here's a television show. Here's some fucking porn. Here's a needle. Here's a, some drugs here. It doesn't matter. Here's some entertainment as long. Here's Netflix prime. doesn't matter. Here's an escape for you. Don't worry. We'll take away all the bad things in your life. So you can be as soft and pillowy and marshmallowy as possible. So we can control your sorry ass. You know who you can't control? People that know who they are and aren't hiding. Oh, I got lots of fucking mistakes. I've made all kinds of things. Most of you guys couldn't handle taking your skeletons and displaying them to the fucking world. I don't give a shit. I don't fucking care if people know all about everything in my past. I don't care. See, most people have a problem. They would never, never allow somebody, if it was possible, to read every thought they have because they'd just be mortified. They sure as fuck, most of you guys would go nuts if your internet history, history was exposed. And if your skeletons were pulled out of your closet, you guys would ball your way all the way to the first legal office you could because you'd be like, well, they're slandering me. Mm -hmm. You know how you become absolutely unbreakable? Have nothing to hide. Just have nothing to hide. Own your shit. Listen, are you kidding me? I, I, I made a decision. I made a decision to make a bunk video for CrossFit, which is just fucking stupid. That alone is, and it was a decision. Motherfucker, I knew what I was doing. It wasn't an accident. Some of you guys go, it was an accident. I didn't know what I was doing. You fucking did it. Of course you knew what you were doing. I knew damn well what I was doing. I made a video because I didn't have any time. Didn't mean I didn't know how to do the work. You could ask anybody at CSA. They'll be like, this motherfucker's a badass athlete. Oh, I was. I earned my position. I was just lazy. Made a dumb fucking decision. Next day, next day, I owned it. I owned it. 
And I had some, I had some weak ass motherfuckers in the comments. I'll never forget. You guys were hilarious. Come on, look at this guy right back to doing it. He said, what the fuck else am I going to do? Sit there and wallow in self pity like you and put my whole life on hold because of my, my boneheaded decision. So I got judged and I got hated and I had, I got criticism and attacks and advice. That was my favorite one. I got all this stuff from people when I was on the bottom. And then I got in that. And then it was just, you guys are fucking embarrassing. Just shit talking the fuck out of me. But my following went up. Why? Because you wanted to come around and see if there was anything else that was going to burn down. Sorry, motherfucker. I started winning. I built a multi-million dollar company with my wife. Why? Because my wife's a badass. And then I had a tumor grow in my chest the size of a football, had a lung removed, and I had all kinds of other people slide in and just start shit talking and trash talking and trying to keep me down, tell me not to do anything. I'm being stupid, disregarding the doctors and not doing any of the chemo or whatever the hell else I said I was doing about my health and my body. You guys all called me selfish. You're selfish. You're selfish sitting there getting up out of that bed. You're selfish. You got garden hoses coming out of you. You should be laying in that bed. Two weeks, they told me I was going to be there. I was home in seven. Yeah, selfish. Fuck you and you're selfish. I was home because I decided that I was a liability and I didn't like that. But I got shit talked for it. I got shit talked for having cancer. And then, and then I decided to go completely the other direction in the equation. And I went, I'm going to build the baddest, most savage motherfucker in the world out of myself two and a half years ago. I came out, I could barely walk. I would walk about eight to 10 feet. It would take me two to three minutes to catch my breath. And I was on my knee. My wife had to help me up. And I had a box with hoses, IVs all over me, and an oxygen line in me all the time. I didn't care. I fucking hated it. Some of you guys need to start looking at everything that you hate about yourself. Stop looking at everybody else. Look at what you hate about yourself. Focus on that. Fix that. Shut the fuck up about other people. Look at your own backyard, man. Stop worrying about someone else's. Let them worry about it. You think it's your prerogative and your right to go out and talk about someone else. Go ahead. You better make sure your own house is in check. Because you guys get devastated when somebody looks at you. Fuck, don't look at me. Why not? Your life is a dumpster fire. So I started building myself up. I went to, I've never missed a day. I've never missed a single fucking day since I opened my eyes and I saw my wife. After surgery, after they pulled out my lung, after they pulled out that tumor, I have never missed a day. Not one. How many of you guys can say that? You can't. I've never missed. Ever. I've never missed a training day. I've never missed keeping my word. I've never missed doing anything that I said I was going to do, which is keeping my word. I never missed any task, any business goal, any target. I've never missed a fucking thing. Do you know why? Because I will stay on it until I hit it. Because I'm willing to endure the pain, the discomfort, the, the everything, the sadness, the, the, all the stuff that comes with it. I'm willing to miss what I, I, I would love to go see. Do you know why? Because the flip side of that equation is I can go and do it infinitely more times because now I have the money. You know why people screw up their life is because they go, well, I don't want to sacrifice my time with little, little Tommy or little Donna. I have to go see that, that, you know, whatever Swan Lake or whatever the fuck it is. Yeah. Except you know what? Little Donna isn't going to remember that. You will as the parent. You're the same weak-ass parent that calls home when you're on vacation when the kid is doing just fine, hanging out with grandma and grandpa. Let me talk to little Tommy. But Tommy hasn't asked for you. Let me talk to little Tommy. Hey, Tommy. And Tommy goes, uh, because they now remember that you're gone. You didn't do it for Tommy, you selfish prick. You did it for you. That's what you do when you go see some little performance or you listen to a reading at school. Listen, it doesn't make you a bad parent. You're building a life that you can do more shit with them. You know what they're going to remember if you, if you go and you skip all your business obligations and you just keep it slow? Because you go, I have to do my family stuff. Listen, you could do all your family stuff, but you know what they're going to remember? The fighting about the money. That's what they're going to remember. You can call me wrong all you want. I don't care. I'm still right. You can argue all you want. I'm right. I work 16 hour days with my family, but you know what? We charter jets and live our life the way we want. When we go on vacation, I don't have to plan it. We just decide to go. We don't have to think about buying a house. We just buy a house. We don't have to think about buying a car. We just buy a car. And my entire day is spent helping all of you guys. My entire business is built on helping people. 
How can I help you earn the money, build the business, build the coaching business? How can I get your mindset right? Every single program I have has a workout component to it. I don't give a fuck how you work out. You're giving me an hour of your day, every day, seven days a week. That's what I demand of you. You can't do that. Don't come coach with me. One hour. I don't care what the fuck you do. Go for a walk for an hour. Do burpees for an hour. I'll give you a workout plan if you want it. I've got three kick-ass plans. You can do my stuff if you can keep up. But don't bitch at me to change my workout plan, my personal workout plan, when you can't do it. Downgrade and check your ego at the door. But my job, my job, God charged me with going, you better help humanity. That's exactly what I'm doing. Nobody coaches like me. I have a stack of millionaires a mile high that came out of my program. You talk to every one of them. That's even better. I got nothing to hide. The only time my program would never work is if you didn't do the work, just like almost everything else out there in the world. But I'm not going to skip because I made, like, I'm not going to sit there and go, well, I said I would sit by the pool and bounce a ball with my daughter or my son. You know what I'll say? Hope, sweetheart, we're going to have to do it tomorrow. And you know what my kids know? We have trained our kids to be disciplined children and tough children. They can handle real things in life. You think that that's the biggest disappointment they're going to suffer in life is if mom and dad don't make it to a jiu-jitsu tournament? They're going to suffer way worse than whatever you can come up with when you miss something. Build your fucking life so you can give them the life. Because I'm, I'll just stop there. You need to. like That's all people do is they just seek escape. You're so desperate just to escape. So you take the pills and all this stuff. You just, I got to escape. I'm stressed out, so I'm going to take a pill, and then I'm going to go see my little fucking daughter's dance. But then you sit there bitching and moaning, and you're wishing that you did the work because you come home, you check your bank account, and it only has two zeros in it. Listen, all of the things you're using to escape, even if you're trying to validate it, get off your soapbox. Get off your soapbox. Toughen up. Be willing to take a little more pain. Because I wrote this down. He said, a man is hardened and strengthened through that which is sent by God to test him because the other side of that test is your victory, yours. Like the world has become so demanding about the need for escape. You know, the demand for escape has, has created the absence of real struggle, real adversity, and real men and women. So now all that's left are these people that are incapable of handling life. I see these programs that come across my feed. I'd pick up my phone, but it's charging right now. I, I, these, they come across my feed sometimes, and, and I'm going to drink some Coke. I got I to gotta listen to that. I wonder what that sounds like on the other side of this microphone. If I see these programs come across my feed, you know, it'll, it'll, so many of you guys, how to X without Y. You're selling easy. It's marketing, right? Let me tell you how easy the results are going to be. You won't have to do any work. Give me your money. I'll get you jacked in 12 weeks. My fitness program in 90 days. I have two programs, one year and forever. Take your pick. Commitment to excellence doesn't have a fucking end date. Just so you know. I know that's really a struggle for some of you people, but commitment to excellence doesn't have an end date. If you commit to excellence, it's for life. The minute you stop, your end date is the day you decided to commit to suboptimal, low-level, low-frequency, low standards. You committed wrong direction. Commitment to excellence doesn't have an end date because it's constantly evolving. But I see these programs. 90-day programs are a waste of fucking money. 12-week programs are the dumbest thing in the world. What are you going to do after 12 weeks? What are you going to do after 90 days? Stop? People go, well, then you've, you've built the habits. No, most people spend the entire time during a 90-day program just to tell you what really goes on. They spend the entire time going, fuck, I can't wait till the 90-day program is over. So I can go back to doing all the stupid shit I've been doing that got me to where I was before I began. And they complain about it the entire time because they think the program's going to do the work. You can't tolerate the discomfort. That's why most people don't work out. That's why most people don't start businesses. You want to be a millionaire? Give me 12 to 16 hours a day, every day for the next 365 days. If you listen to everything I tell you to do, you will be a millionaire. It's that simple. You want to be jacked and diced up and athletic? Give me one hour a day, every day for a year. Nobody will recognize you, even yourself. You'll be so badass.
But most people don't want to, oh, I can't do that. I don't have the time. Sleep faster. Arnold Schwarzenegger said it. Like I, I see people like the best is when people go, I'm going to, let me tell you all about my program and how it's going to work, but you're not even doing, it. you're selling programs. You're not even doing whether it's business or listen, if your marriage is broken, you can't sell a program on how to get your head right. How, how the fuck is that even possible? It, it can't because you aren't doing it. It's just like, if there's no struggle and no discomfort, it can't work because the component required to make the change is missing the struggle, no struggle, no pain, no change. Think of everything that you've changed massively in your life. It's almost always been preceded by a big fucking struggle. Like the deeper the pit that you've got to climb out of, the greater the height of that mountain that you're going to be standing on. You just have to be willing to climb out of that pit. Most people go, no, forget it. I'm going to stay in here. And they just keep digging with it. Put down the fucking shovel. Like the elimination of struggle is, is the greatest lie that's ever been sold to the world. because it encompasses so many things. Like most people, the problem is most of you guys know it's a lie. You have no experience with pain and struggle because mom and dad and teachers all put you in this little bubble and shield you from anything. And they think they're teaching you something. They're teaching you nothing. They're teaching you how to hide. They brainwashed people into thinking that there shouldn't be any pain. There is always pain. Pain is what causes growth. What the hell do you think muscle soreness is when you go, I want to train, but I don't want to be sore. Then don't worry about training starve yourself into skinniness and be unhealthy as fuck. I work out. I'm sore. I, I, listen, I'll just ask how many of you guys are absolutely pissed if you aren't sore the next day? I bet everybody just went, fuck me. Yeah, exactly. Why? Because you feel like you did something. If I'm not sore, it pisses me off. Like when I was a kid, I was terrified of my principal. Why? Because of the pain he could inflict. He whipped my ass. And then, and then he would take my ass home and my dad would whip my ass. See, the real damage about hiding, excuse me, see, even that, do you know why I just said excuse me when I birthed? Because my parents demanded respect. Some of you kids just sit there and bah, bah. all the way, just burping and farting and acting like a fucking pig. And you wonder why you come into my house and you act like that. I'll knock you into the next room. It's ridiculous. The real damage out of Hiding from, from pain and struggle and adversity is so much deeper than just the pain and the adversity because everybody now is this, is a swipe right person, you know, left, right, whatever the fuck direction it is that, that gets you away. Because instead of sitting down with your spouse and having a conversation with your spouse and handling your shit, and fixing what's broken, even if it takes a day or a week or a month, it, it doesn't matter. You, you guys look at your phone and swipe or comment or throw some hate and then find the next person. But you bring all the adversity with you that you haven't handled. It's like this demon that's just roaring up behind you and you never turn around to fight it. So it's just getting bigger. See, you, you just chose another escape. It didn't work. Why? Because you, you, we've been married for three months and it's not working. How the fuck do you know? Three months? You don't know each other. The beauty of a marriage, by the way, is getting to know each other the whole time. That's what's badass. It's just badass as fuck. You get rid of the struggle and the adversity in a relationship. You have no relationship because the ability to navigate that and, and fix it. Listen, it's not, it's not fighting. It's an argument. Arguments, you solve problems. Fighting, you try to hurt each other. Most of you guys fight in your relationships. Stop it. You know, like very few people can, can really modulate and use the discomfort that God provides the proper way. It's there to teach you. It's a fucking tool. Like part of the reason though, the world and society is, is so fucking broken and soft is because nobody's learning anything. Nobody's learning a damn thing because there's no pain. None. Like people feel discomfort and they spin 180 and they hit the distraction button as fast as they can, whether it's a phone or the internet, or like I said, drugs or alcohol or porn or, or something. They just literally addict, you're addicted to distraction and escape. It doesn't even matter. It's just a giant nebulous term and everything fits in there that is other than adversity and struggle. You need the struggle. The struggle tattoos the lesson on your fucking heart and your brain. And then you never do it again and it makes you stronger. That's how you build a suit of armor. God, and you have no idea how badass my suit of armor is, man. It's awesome. What they need to do, just so you know, what people need to do is turn around, look at that demon, and you go for the throat. You look for every source of your problems and you go towards it. 
the distance is shorter. You keep trying to run away from a storm. It's, ch it's chasing you down. It's going to catch you eventually. Turn around and face it and just demolish that thing. Like, the, it's, it's just like since everybody's like looking for escape into wherever the fuck is the easiest way you guys can go, the world is compiling this massive list of problems that are never resolved. Except if you heard what I just said, they're never resolved, so they never go away. So now you have a problem. You pivot 180, run to escape. Problem's still there. You do the drug, now you've created a new problem. Now you do the drug, you need to come off the drug, you've created a new problem. But you still have never handled the original problem. It's like when somebody says, I have depression. No, you don't. You have something that's making you depressed. Find out what that is and fix that. Stop trying to fix the result. That's exactly why there's so many issues. Listen, I'm not saying people don't feel sad or anxious or upset or overwhelmed or stressed. Find out what the fuck is causing that problem and fix it. Do you know why people get a good night's sleep? Because they feel at peace. If you don't have a good night's sleep, you don't feel at peace. You might want to listen to what I just said again. What's causing you unrest? What's causing the problem? Not how do I escape from the problem? Because the list of unresolved problems is forever growing in your life. Except now you're not seeking escape for, for just what's happening. You're desperate to escape from everything because you still have that in your subconscious. Because if you don't get it, it's always fucking there. It is always there. Let me make sure my mic's on. The problem is since you've never struggled, you don't have the capacity to handle it. So you're fucked when it finally shows up. You know, this is what's happening. People are just starting to, I don't fucking care then. And they just sink right down to the bottom. So now, now you've effectively spun the entire narrative to where motherfuckers like me, me, like who are successful and powerful and unbreakable and undeniable and strong and, and confident and relentless. Like these just badass motherfuckers like me, they've turned it around on its head. So this, 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 look at this, this. I am a strong, savage 51 year old. I run miles and miles because, and it hurts. It hurts every fucking time. I'm running, I'm running on one damn lung. Somebody asked me the other day, hey, listen, I got to ask, and I hope you don't take offense to it, but what does it feel like? I said, take a McDonald's straw, put it in your mouth, and just breathe through that. And then when you start to get out of breath, keep the same size straw. That's how it feels, 24-7, 365, in case you guys are fucking wondering. You want to know how it feels to be me? That. How many times have you seen me quit? Zero. See? So this, this muscle, this mindset, this commitment, this drive, this resiliency, this resourcefulness, this power, the capacity to do anything on this earth backed by God, all of that, that goes along, all of the things that go along with being a genuine badass motherfucker, all of this, all of this is now considered bad. And the ones bumping around into each other, the big fat bellies all on the bottom, clueless, no idea how to handle adversity, no idea how to come to a conclusion or to do any kind of like whatever positive thinking, no idea. Everything is negative. No, no critical thinking whatsoever in their fat, broke, angry, bitter state because they have no resiliency and they have no discipline skills in the right direction either. They're disciplined to find the escape. These are the motherfucking bitches that are, are celebrated. You're celebrated and free plane se seats. Really? You're not celebrated by me. You're not. You have no value to me. And to anyone else that is just like me as well. Because we look at that and we go, that's disgusting. You chose that. That's a decision. You're not fat by accident. I've never accidentally eaten anything. You didn't have an affair by accident. My dick has never slid into anybody by accident. You didn't do a drug by accident. You've never spent anything by accident unless it was an auto charge on your card. So stop looking externally to blame everything and handle your shit because it'll toughen your skin. The, the more people chase down escape, the less powerful they become and the more controlled and compliant they become. Like, think about that. The more you seek escape, the more compliant and controllable you become because you're afraid that escape is going to be taken away. It's not, it's not the pain even. It's the fear of like, shit, they might take my escape. I watch people lose their, how many of you, if you guys have kids, I'll just ask. I mean, how many of you guys that have kids, if, if the internet goes out and their Xbox or PlayStation goes, turns off, how many of, how many of you guys watch your kids just fucking spin out? Or 
your punishment to your children is taking their cell phone. Not much of a punishment. That's an escape. You're taking away the escape. See, all they have to do now, and they know it. I mean, the, the, the opposition, the motherfuckers in, the tr in, in control of the force of average that want you to live there, but they don't want to live there themselves. Yeah. All they have to do is come down to where you are, give you a little jab, pop you one, and the whole crowd at the bottom panics and runs the other direction to avoid the pain. And then they have to go, but you're going to avoid that pain. You better listen to me or I'm going to take away your escape. We've seen it. I won't say it. I won't talk about it, but you guys all know what the fuck I'm talking about. If you want absolute control, complete absolute domination of your entire life, your own life, your one life, your one life, if you want control over that thing, it starts by looking right into the eyes of all that shit that you're hiding from. It's going to hurt. You're going to hate it. It's going to scare you. It's going to piss you off. It's going to make you angry. It's going to make you frustrated. You're not going to want to do it. You're going to negotiate like crazy. Don't. Don't negotiate. Keep walking towards you. You're going to hit with everything under the sun and the people that actually support you are the ones that are going to stand right there. It won't be very many. I promise you that. And the ones who don't are the ones that are going to try and talk you out of it and tell you you're making stupid and selfish and you shouldn't do it. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. I have people still, they, they constantly remind, they want some while they jump on my feet. Oh yeah, what, what about that real cool hack where you loop the video for CrossFit? Why don't you show us how to do that? Ha 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 ha. Yeah, you fucking moron. I made more this morning than you've made in your entire life. I have an amazing marriage with incredible kids living in a beautiful fucking mansion with seven cars and another one on the way, and I'm healthy and strong, and my life looks radically different than that day. Your life still looks the same as that day five years ago. Yeah, you go ahead and keep holding on to that shit, dumbass. It's affecting you, not me, but I know I live right free in your brain. I don't even know who you are. That's what you need to start thinking all of you, because they're going to want to remind you of where you failed so they can stay there. Until you are willing to increase your pain tolerance, you're going to keep getting crippled by everything that shows up to challenge you and get in your way. Everything that comes to stand on your throat is going to cripple you because it won't matter. And they're going to happen. If they're going to show up, they're going to, ha they're, they're going to come. When you're winning, they're going to show up. When you're losing, they're going to show up. Everything in between, they're going to show up. So why are you listening to whoever shows up? Start listening to the person you see in the mirror, not the people you see in the fucking reflection behind you. Like I, I opened my eyes. Holy shit. Are you kidding me? When I opened my eyes, I, I, I looked at my wife and I was barely coherent. I was still high from the anesthesia. And I had to look into the eyes of who I was laying in that hospital bed in recovery after I finally realized that they took out my lung. Me. People keeping me alive, machines keeping me alive, tubes and just IVs all over the place in me, connected to a wall, a vacuum hose, so I didn't get a tension pneumothorax. My wife watching me struggle to breathe. I had to look into that, and it was a fucking demon. I had to look right into the eyes of that fucking demon, and I had to go, I ain't running, motherfucker, so you want to go to war? I'm in the arena waiting for you. Now what do you fucking got? And I went to war and chopped him down. Why would I do anything else? To run away and cower only makes the demon stronger. And it was the hardest shit I've ever done in my life. 51 years, that's the hardest thing I've ever done. Because everyone, all the voices were telling me to quit. All the voices were telling me to give up. All the voices, except mine. It's not that it didn't hurt. It hurt every day. I came home seven days later and the first thing I said was I want to work out. And I went for a walk because it's all I could do. It fucking hurt so bad. And I walked until I couldn't and I crippled and fell to the ground. And then my wife walked me into the house and I did it again and again and again. And I have never missed. It doesn't mean that <laughs> I don't feel the pain. It means that I do it in spite of the pain and discomfort because every time I do it, every time I do that, every time I'm willing to take the pain, Every struggle that shows up, on the other side of that, I add another piece to my armor. Add another, another scale to that armor. I add another piece to that armor. I make another callus on my body. I build another layer of resiliency around my mind. I become even more unstoppable and unbreakable. You know why this is called unbreakable as fuck? Because that's exactly what I'm trying to teach you how to do. This isn't a podcast where I sit there and bitch at you and call you stupid. This is a podcast where I go, this is what I did. This is what you need to do to toughen yourselves the fuck up. You want to join a real program? Join mine.
You want to keep failing and doing all the stuff you're doing? You go right ahead and keep wishing you had a better source of income or a better family or a better body, enjoying all the little rinky dink bullshit programs by soft ass people that go, we're just going to sit here and sing a little song and play the ukulele. If that's what you need, great. If it makes you stronger, even better. I doubt it. You have got to be willing to take the pain and the discomfort. If it's hiding, if you're doing anything that's hiding you from that, you're not growing. You're not. Most people, they've chased escape so long that they've got no armor because of running away all the time. You want strength? You want strength? You want to build that suit of armor and callous your mind and build so much resiliency? You're literally the most unstoppable motherfucker in the, in the world. Get in that arena. That's all I got, man. Never miss. Never. Never miss. This is where we fight. This is where they die. This is where they die.